everybody. Welcome and thank you for tuning in for Cocktails on the Town. We are so excited to have you. My name is Chauncey Walker. I am class of 15 Georgia State alum and I also work for the Alumni Association. So I'm super excited to be a part of this event today with Dr. Kyle Townsend. So thank you so much for joining us today. We are making different cocktails. So if you pre-register for this event, you would see the different cocktails that we're making today along with our suggested menu items. So today we're gonna go through some tips and tricks and show you um, how you can be your own bartender at home. So before we get started, I would love to introduce Dr. Kyle. He is a professor here at Georgia State University. He teaches a variety of classes for the School of Hospitality, including one of the beverage management courses. He is also specializes in private club management, food and beverage operations, and quality service in the hospitality industry. His research interests have focused on high quality service in sports arenas, beverage tourism, and sports fans. Townsend's research has appeared in the International Journal of Sport and Society, as well as conference proceedings from the International Council of Hotel, Restaurant, and Institutional Education. Um, he's also had research at the Southern Council on Hotel, Res Restaurant, and Institutional Education, and the Interdis International Interdisciplinary Business Economics of Advancement. So he is definitely well versed and knowledgeable in this field and area. And we're so excited to have him here today. If you all have any questions for him throughout the event, there is a submit a question link below on your screen. If you're tuning in from Facebook, you can just shoot us a comment on the Facebook Live. We can see it and make sure we get all of your questions answered throughout the event. If you don't want to miss, make sure you get all the information and knowledge that you need. So now that I've given my whole spiel, I want to turn it over to Dr. Townsend himself. Well, Chauncey, thank you. That is just a great introduction. Um, I'm excited to be here. This is a really neat opportunity that the Alumni Association is offering to, to its alums and um, kind of neat opportunity for us to get together and share a little time together and um, show some tips and tricks. Uh, I kind of think the rundown that we're going to do, we are going to start, I'm going to talk a little bit about cocktails, maybe what they are, um, mixology as kind of a practice, we'll, we'll discuss that a bit. Um, we'll move into looking a little bit at our ingredients, how we lay things out, um, especially focusing on a couple of the simple tools. We're not doing anything um, too crazy today. We're not going to have any any flaming cocktails, any smoking what? cocktails. That's what I came here um, for. Okay, yeah. I forgot the dry ice, Chunky. I forgot the dry ice. <laughs> next time, next time. Um, so yeah, um, we'll we'll look at some of those basic tools so that you can use um, just a small set of tools and a small set of ingredients and kind of make yourself quite a different uh, variety of cocktails. Okay. So ultimately, we're going to focus on something that is called a cocktail. Um, and really, what is that? We, we could start there, uh, something that we would mention in my beverage class, for example. And typically, people look at a cocktail as a mixed drink containing at least three ingredients, not to include the garnish. We also have some garnishes here, kind of make our drinks a little prettier than they would have been otherwise. Um, but, but really, that kind of idea of a cocktail would be that mixed drink with, with about three ingredients at the minimum. Um, another thing with this idea of mixology is that we are focusing on adding distinctive taste, color, and texture to a beverage. So it really needs to be kind of thought out in the same way one would look at um, cooking in the kitchen, making a dish. Um, while you could be successful randomly throwing things together, it wouldn't be the right way to go about it. So we'd want to look at um, what kind of flavors go together, um, what kind of flavors can play off of each other, and of course the appearance and the final product. So, um, so that's kind of the idea, and that's really what we focus on, for example, in our class where we're talking about adding those distinctive components. What can we do um, to add those distinctive components? Um, to start, I want to look at a few of the, the basic tools that we're going to use today. Um, and really, one of the keys would be a cocktail shaker. Uh, these, are, these are inexpensive. Um, they are usually three-piece where you've got a lid, um, a strainer here. So this actually helps you strain out any ingredients that you put solid ingredients in here that you don't want to end up in the final product. Um, and then the body of the shaker. And this is really just used to get your drinks ice cold. Um, one of the tips that I would give towards making quality cocktails across the board is that you can almost never have too much ice. Um, it, is, it is just a fact that you, you, um, you might end up with less liquid in a cup, but the experience of drinking that beverage with all of that ice um, is really a, a quality experience as opposed to um, one that doesn't have that. Okay, So this is um, a super crucial tool if you're making cocktails. Um, you don't 
to, to come off the rails alone. You don't ever put carbonated beverages into the shaker. You don't ever want to put a carbonated beverage in here and shake it because then you have you have taken out all of the carbonation, right? The, the CO2 is liquefied into the, the carbonated beverage under pressure um, and you don't want to undo that. So as you'll see with one of the techniques that we do twice today, um, we will add carbonated beverages at the very end into the cocktail, okay? That way they keep their sparkle, they keep that exciting flavor and texture sort of on your tongue mm -hmm. um, and you wouldn't want to mess that up. In addition to the strainer lid that comes with the cocktail shaker, there is also a bar strainer that sort of looks like this, and it fits inside of the cocktail shaker um, and allows you to strain it like that as well. Um, the perk of this over the, the lid is that there is a very small strainer built into this lid, and you have a whole lot more surface area with the cocktail strainer, the separate one, so it doesn't get clogged up kind of quite the same way. Um, that may not matter. We're going to make one cocktail today, for example, that you wouldn't need this at all. It doesn't really have any solid ingredients to speak of. Um, a few of the other cocktails today, we're going to do a technique that is called muddling. Okay, And muddling is a very simple technique that we basically use the blunt end um, of an object. They sell a muddler. Um, and it sometimes actually comes in a cocktail set that comes with these variety of things. Um, but you could use the, the end of a wooden spoon, the end of a plastic spoon. Um, or buy your own muddler, okay? So you have a lot of possibilities there. But effectively, this tool is just to mash the ingredients up and release all the juices and the oils um, into the liquid and into the cocktail, okay? So we'll get a lot of flavor out of that. Um, the final part that you will want to make sure you have to do these simple sort of cocktails is what is called a jigger. Um, this particular cocktail shaker actually has one in the lid. So this lid has um, measured increments across the center. So you see there. Um, it was a top. Yeah, so it, it looks just like the lid, but it actually is, is metered increments from one half of an ounce up to an ounce and a half. Um, and so ultimately we'll use this as our jigger today, but a lot of, again, those same cocktail sets that feature muddlers um, and strainers, those will ultimately usually feature a jigger as well, okay? So I'm so excited. These are our basic tools, right? Um, tools do get more advanced and, and uh, there are a lot of other tools that you can buy, but those are really extra and, and kind of the idea of today is that we're showing you simple tools and simple techniques that you can subsequently apply across the board of cocktails. Okay, so that'll be kind of a, a focus of today, so to speak. The other thing that I want to lay out is that making cocktails is very much like working as a chef in the kitchen. Um, you want to have all of your ingredients prepared. In fact, there is a phrase, um, a French phrase that we use in the kitchen that is called mise en place. And it means in French, things in place. Okay. So what we've done here in preparation for our event tonight is cut up and prepared all of the uh, ingredients that we use in the drinks, as well as all of the garnishes that we'll use for our drinks. So ultimately what we've done is taken those steps out. Um, and you would see this happen at a bar. If you go up to the bar, um, and order a drink, they don't go get a whole lemon and cut it thin typically. That's, that doesn't work for quality and speedy service. So we've done this ahead of time kind of in that same vein, okay? So really you see here, we've got some simple ingredients. They all work with what we're making today. Um, we've got mint and basil, some limes, some lemons, and some cucumbers kind of as our, our fresh ingredients here. Um, and then of course, we've got our selection of liquors that we're going to use, our spirits here. Um, and a couple of other little liquid ingredients. So I've already whipped up a little bit of um, homemade lemonade. This is just the juice of a lemon, um, about a quarter cup of sugar, um, and about a cup and a half of liquid. So we'll use that for one of our ingredients. The other one that you see here in this pint glass, this is a simple syrup. Um, and a simple syrup is actually used all the time in cooking and in cocktails. It's sort of like a, a trick that, that you would have in the back of the, the house there. It keeps, it, it makes it to where you can easily sweeten things. Um, it also has a lot of uses, like I said, in the kitchen, baking. Um, if you drizzle or brush a little simple syrup on cakes as you're making them, it helps keep them moist and tasty. Um, this simple syrup I made today is honey and water. 50% um, honey, 50% water. Um, the traditional simple syrup is white sugar and, and water in 50-50 portions. Okay, so you kind of, um, you'll see that. And that's actually a useful thing. You can make this and keep it in your refrigerator for, for quite a while. Um, so you can use it for cocktail night next week as well. Okay, so that kind of lays it out there. Um, ingredients wise, I guess we can mention the rest of them real okay, quick. Uh, we've, got, we've got vodka, we've got uh, Tennessee whiskey, um, for the purposes of today, Tennessee whiskey works great. The cocktails, the, the cocktail that we're making today with whiskey, you could also use uh, bourbon whiskey. Um, you could use Canadian whiskey. 
I would not suggest making this particular cocktail um, with Irish or Scotch whiskeys. They're a little bit stronger flavored um, and probably wouldn't play as well. Okay. For those that don't know what Irish whiskeys are, what are like some some examples? Um, um, yeah. You know, you've, you've got quite a few. You've got uh, Tullamore Dew. You've got Jameson is the most famous. James, uh, I do Jameson know that is one. the okay. most famous of the Irish whiskeys. Um, it's really in this kind of same price range. Mm -hmm. um, and and ultimately, you know, if you're if we're if we're going there, bourbon whiskey is is lots of different varieties. Uh, Maker's Mark would be a good example. Um, there there are tons, but but that would be uh, Canadian whiskey would be Crown Royal. Um, and then for Scotch whiskey, there's a huge, huge number there as well. Okay. Um, you'll, you'll see them call those malts or single malts or blended malts is kind of the way they call whiskey over over across the pond. Um, we've also got a, a, a gold rum. This is Bacardi gold rum. Very straightforward. In fact, if you were thinking about stocking a bar, this should absolutely be on the list. Um, you, you also might want to have a um, clear rum or a white rum. Um, and maybe even a spice rum and a, and a dark rum as well. It depends how how, uh, how deep you're trying to how go with your bar. You make right? um, but, but ultimately, this is kind of like the center of the rum spectrum. Um, it's got it's got a good amount of flavor, um, but it doesn't go too crazy like the dark rums. It's not spiced, um, but it does bring some aging flavor that wouldn't be in a in Bacardi silver. Um, the last cocktail, the last um, spirit that we have here is gin. Um, this is Tanqueray gin. Um, this is a quite good gin to use for all kinds of blending. Um, so ultimately, you know, these are some some good beverages to have in your in your cabinet anyway. Uh, but they're what we're going to use tonight. Um, and then just to add something a little extra in for those that may not know, um, all of these are, are made from different raw ingredients, right? They're made from different products. Um, whisk, or, excuse me, vodka is either made from potatoes, um, which is very common in far eastern Europe and in Russia specifically. They'll make it from potatoes. Um, but maybe you've heard of Tito's vodka. It's a huge American. Uh, gluten-free. Yes, gluten-free. And it's able to be gluten-free, not because it's made from potatoes, but because they distill it from corn. Um, so gluten is a is a uh, a protein in wheat, um, and so so Tito's uses corn to make their product um, gluten free. Um, this vodka that we have here is actually a, a grain spirit, what they call a grain neutral spirit. Um, it is made from majorly wheat. Okay, so this is absolute vodka. Um, whiskeys are typically made of a variety of ingredients, but the main one for American whiskeys is corn. Okay, so again, we're using corn here. Rums are either made from molasses or from sugarcane juice. Okay, um, sugarcane or excuse me, molasses is a byproduct of sugar production, especially sugar production using sugarcane. Um, so there are kind of two classes of rum: one that they make with pure sugarcane juice, um, and the other that they make with molasses that um, that uses uh, what essentially is a byproduct, but allows them to. Um, make a value added product out of that. Okay. And then gin is very much like vodka, where it is typically made from grain here, here in the US and in most places, typically made uh, from grains. So we have a full menu here. We got some corn, some bread, a little sugar. Yeah, we've got, we've kind of got it all here. So, um, and the idea with this was to show you cocktails that use different things, but as we go through it, I'll try to mention some other cocktails that you can make with each of these ingredients. So it's not as if you're buying um, the bottle of Jack Daniels, for example, only to make the whiskey smash that we're gonna make. That wouldn't be the case. There's a wide variety of um, different products. And then the last thing that we have here um, is a bottle of American sparkling wine. Um, two of the cocktails that we're making tonight are topped with uh, sparkling wine. So they're kind of um, fresh, they're pretty spring feeling, um, certainly would be good in the summer, but, but that's what we've also got there. So we kind of got the rundown on tools, we've got the rundown on ingredients, mm -hmm. um, and I guess from there we'll go on into making one of these and That's seeing what I'm how it rolls. For, Kyle. I'm yep. ready. Perfect. Okay. Well, John, see if you would for me. Oh, the last thing I wanted to mention is cocktails come in a variety of glasses, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have really two of the most common glasses here. Um, we've got what is sort of like a Collins glass, and we've got what is called a rocks glass, okay? Um, and, and really, if you were to look at a book about cocktails, you would see that they have specific glasses for specific cocktails. Um, what, what we have today is that our cocktails that have carbonated ingredients, we want to put in a smaller diameter glass, like the difference in the top of this one compared to the top of this one, because that top surface area is actually where they lose carbonation. So when you squeeze up that volume or that surface area, um, they, they lose their fizziness more slowly, okay? Which is actually why if you think about a champagne flute, 
as compared to a standard wine glass. Um, that's part of the reason is that by, by squeezing in that surface area on the top, it actually helps it maintain its carbonation a bit longer. Um, so that's a that lot. Makes to, sense. Yeah, that's lot. probably why my mimosas in my plastic cup go a little flat. They, they will do that, okay. right? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by making um, what's called an airmail cocktail. Um, and it's a pretty straightforward and simple one. Um, if you would for me, Chauncey, yes. will you please fill that up with some ice? And then we're going to do two of the tall glasses. Right. You said the more ice the better. You got it. That looks pretty good. Thank you. Know, you I was a bartender back in my day, so I'm a pretty much professional at filling ice into the glass because that's all I did. And remember, this is this is the part where we're going to start using our jitter, okay? Because we do want to make sure that our cocktails are consistent and repeatable. Um, so we will use measures, and I'll and I'll kind of read these out. But what I'll say too is. Um, forget the recipes and forget what somebody else says they have to be. Drinking a cocktail is about you enjoying your cocktail. Um, if you find that you enjoy it more with a little extra lemon or a little extra honey, mm -hmm. or even, little dare I say, a little extra rum, right? <laughs> feel free to make your cocktail that way. That's one of the real perks about making it at home um, is that you get to play with that, right? You get to, to mess around with it, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take one ounce of this Bacardi rum and throw it into our shaker. And so you see it's pretty neat where we got the Yeah. Little, little lines I have to go home and check and see if my top has that lines. I really think mine is just for decoration. I don't really use it. I just kind of go with what my heart desires. <laughs> right. that, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. Um, so this cocktail calls for one half ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. I am going to use one quarter of a lime uh, to meet that mark there, okay? Because these are big juicy limes when I was cutting them, I could tell that they would they would do quite well. Um, and then just to be able to extract a little extra flavor from the oils, we'll throw that in as well. We're going to do one half ounce of honey. Um, and that is going to just go straight in because it will stick to your, to your cocktail shaker. Mm -hmm. And there we go. So this is the first three ingredients. This cocktail only has four ingredients. Okay, so it's very simple, but it's also very delicious. I like to think of this cocktail uh, as a as a bit of a blend of almost like the French and the Caribbean, right? So we did our okay. we did our lime and our rum, but we're gonna top this with sparkling wine, okay? And that's sort of that that French influence. Okay. That's my favorite part. <laughs> you got the next one. Okay. Specifically, when you shake a cocktail, you want to shake it for about 30 seconds. You're not only making it cold, you're also getting a little bit of water um, into this as well, okay? And do be sure you hold the lid, uh, because unless you're trying to make a mess. <laughs> so good, so one of those up with ice for me, please. so great already i'm excited mm. all right that looks good so the next thing i'm going to do is pour about two ounces of champagne on top of this So we full drop one of these. And then every time you're making cocktails, um, it's just kind of nice and fun to add a garnish. Um, you want to pick a, yeah, you want to pick a, gar a garnish that plays with the drink. You don't want to put, um, you know, we have cucumbers today. They're, they're, don't put the cucumber in the whiskey smash. Um, but, but for example, this one with the lime juice is going to go just nice like that. Give it a light stir with your straw. Um, and then tell me what you think. All right. You know, I'm a kind of sore. I'm going to let you know. Okay. Oh, wow. That's good. It's like, I don't even think I taste the rum. It's just sparkling and refreshing. It makes it want to go. <sighs> so that's one of the keys to with uh, with something like this is that um, we're not we're not making. Ultimately, somebody's going to ask a question about what um, what products you should buy. Like, is this the time to to use the most expensive rum, for example? Mm. And it's really it's really not in a cocktail. You kind of want to. Um, you want to use these sort of mid-level products. This wouldn't be the time to break out the most expensive of rums because it's just playing sort of as one of the components. Okay. Um, you don't want to pull out your your extraordinarily nice whiskeys. I mean, whiskeys can cost hundreds to thousands of dollars mm -hmm. a, a bottle. Um, those are for drinking straight, right? Exceptionally nice vodka, for example. You would you would want to use it um, 
when you're when you're drinking it straight. But for a cocktail, you really can get by um, using using less expensive products. Um, we were so we were how actually, less yeah. expensive because to fill you all in today when I was at the store to pick up these items, the man behind the counter offered me the brand Taka. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it was a brand that I would was very familiar with my during my earlier time in college and. I would say that I am beyond my taco level. Sure. So how low are we saying? Like, is there a limit to where you probably don't want to make cocktails with this because you don't want to feel it would like be, a zombie the next day? It would be hard to say like where that line is exactly, but I, I would okay. have a simple trick for you, and it would be that you want a glass bottle. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's there's a whole selection of, of, of beverages that come in plastic bottles. Um, these are probably a little less quality than you want to use. But again, you don't want to use the finest of ingredients for this. So if it's in a glass bottle, you're pretty much good to go for your cocktail. You, you would be. That Got would, it. That would be a the great... taco that he brought me was definitely in a very large plastic bottle. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think skip that one. Um, leave that one for the younger folks. Yeah, so, you know, everyone has to experience it. You know, I'm grateful for my experience. Tell you what, top me off with a couple ounces of champagne and I'll keep getting things ready for our next cocktail. Tilt it so there's not a lot of bubbles. You know. So um, I, I said I would do this. Um, some other things, you know, you've got you've got rum here. The most famous rum drink is, is the Cuba Libre, um, which is basically a, a rum and coke with, with a lime. Um, but there are tons of different rum drinks that you can make. Maybe you've heard of daiquiris um, would be a good example. Pina coladas. Of course, all that Caribbean influence um, plays into what, what we're using here. But you really have a lot of possible um, beverages that you can make with rum. So keep that in mind, right? This isn't, this isn't we bought the rum and now um, now we're stuck with it because we only make these every so That often. actually makes sense. Every time I'm going to like a tropical Caribbean place for vacation, every drink that they market or sell to you is something that's rum based. And I remember I was like, what do you have without rum? And the bartender was like, why would you not put a rum in it? Right. I said, you're right. Go ahead and give me the rum. Give <laughs> me the rum. So actually that's an interesting point. Um, and, and you will find that, that that's tied to geography and production. Right? Mm. They, they grow a tremendous amount of sugar cane for sugar production, and so that's why rum is so famous throughout the Caribbean. Um, you will also find, make that connection. Um, our whiskey here that figures a significant, um, features a significant amount of corn, of course, coming from America, where we grow a ton of corn. Um, the reason the Russian vodka tends to be potatoes is because that's what is so widely produced there. So, so there's a bit of geography woven in um, to all of that, and, and, and much like you said, when you're there, drink the rum, mm -hmm. right? You know, that's kind of, um, there's a reason that that's the, the way that it works out there. So, yeah, that one's quite good. Um, nice and fresh. I think that, uh, that I think the, the champagne on top really adds a, a nice touch there. I'm definitely going to make that. Um, that's on my list of things to make. That Perfect. one would be airmail. Yes, right? and airmail. so we're going to do our second champagne cocktail here. Okay. Um, but this will be pretty safe, straightforward as well, okay? okay. So here we're gonna start with our gin drink, okay? okay? So if you would kindly do my ice again. I can do it, I am the master of this ice. The ice. All right. I am so excited to try these. Hopefully you all now have some new summer cocktails to make. That's another thing to point out about these ones that we chose. They really do fit well in the spring summer um, time frame. Um, so so feel free to play with them a little. But these these really are kind of timely beverages as well. Okay. So this one here, gin cocktail. We're going to start with one ounce of gin. Um, we're making what's called a French seventy five here. Okay. So while you're pouring, I had a quick question, a little bit about the last drink, how we use rum. What would you say is when? Do you choose clear rum over the dark rum? You um, really will find that that kind of depends on your flavor profile. Okay. So um, you can, you, you, there are so many cocktails out there. And I don't want to come too far off the rails just mentioning them, but certain things, you wouldn't use dark rum in a pina colada. If you think about the color you would get out of that, it wouldn't be appealing, okay? So uh, a lot of times light rum would be used for things where it would not color the final product. Um, as you saw with the beverage that we made, it's not strongly colored, um, and it works out quite well like that. That was perfect. Yeah, um, a, a good example to, to follow along with that is that you could make um, Cuba Libre's rum and Cokes with dark rum, and you would never notice a difference there, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's um, something to consider there. So, okay. okay, so we've got one ounce of gin in here, um, right. and if you will, fill me up a tall glass with ice as well. Cool. 
And then we're going to do one half ounce of lemon juice. So this is very similar to the last beverage we made, just using um, gin and lemon instead of rum and lime. Okay, so keep that in mind. When well, isn't there a drink with just gin and gin, gin and lime? Or did I make that up? There are um, quite a few. It, that's very similar to the gimlet we'll make. Gimlet. Yeah, that's very, very okay. similar to what we'll make here. We'll get to the gimlet, guys. Yes. Um, okay, so we've got we've got one ounce of gin, we've got a half an ounce of lemon juice, and then we're going to add in a half an ounce of our simple syrup. Okay. So again, this was made with um, half honey, half um, water, and if you use hot water, it really helps uh, dissolve it as well. Okay, so we're going to add that in, and then this one will also be our champagne cocktail, so it's going to be topped with champagne. Uh, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. <laughs> okay. A couple of napkins, please. Okay. I got you. I'm going to ice cream, whatever you need. All right. I'm going to just make you one of these. Okay. So we don't put too long. All right. So this is a really, really delicious cocktail, um, and and really, um, it, I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna love this one. I'm excited. So here we're gonna float two ounces of champagne on this one as well, which will basically be the entirety of the glass. I like it. Perfect. Fill it up. And then this one we're gonna use a um, piece of lemon peel, just the outside layer of it. And we will twist this to allow it to sprinkle a little of the, the oils. Okay. Well, we and got we'll some serve that right cheese. on top. I think Mallory said a French 75 is such a classic and one of her favorites. It, it is, this is a classic cocktail. So this is in the same vein. I mean, this cocktail is from, from I believe, in the, the 50s and 60s. Oh, wow. So well, cheers, This Mallory. one's, this one's been around quite a while. And, and gin is in a rare group. While, while you try that, gin is in a rare group. What do you think? Okay. What kind of things do you taste in there? I definitely taste the, the lemon. Okay. Which I do like. I actually don't even taste the gem. I'm tasting lemon and then just the sparkliness in, from the champagne. Great. Okay. It's very light. It's it, super refreshing. Similar to the first one, but the first one was a bit sweeter, mm -hmm. I think, because of the rum. But this one's more of just a clean, crisp. You got it. This is a perfect hot day, hot afternoon yeah. sort of beverage there, okay? Um, and I'm starting to get the impression I need to, to, to up the alcohol content for you to be able to taste them. Um, but well, that's okay. These are We're following sort of standard recipes, and like I said a little while ago, standard. if that's how you like it, then please feel free. I mean, you're supposed to do this because it's fun, so, so make sure to do that. Um, a little about gin. Gin is sort of unique. All of these drinks, all these uh, spirits, are products of distillation, a process that we use to make high strength alcohols, okay? Um, but the interesting thing is when we make distillates, they all come out clear. Uh, the product of distillation for everything is clear. So I, I mentioned these have different ingredients, um, but once they're run through what's called a still um, and they come out, they are all clear. We add in these colors that you see um, through aging processes. So this rum here has a nice golden hue and the whiskey we have has um, a bit even of a darker hue. And they actually get that color from sitting in oak barrels that have been charred on the inside, they actually burn the inside of the barrel. Um, and they actually get a little flavor and they get a little color from that, okay? So both of these have flavor and color. Vodka is very simple. It is, it is almost flavorless. The finest vodkas are nearly flavorless, okay? You'll just get a bit of burn from the alcohol. And gin is the sort of odd man out because when you make all of these, even this one, when they come off of the still, they have almost no flavor, okay? So these get it from the barrel. This one doesn't have it because we don't do anything. We actually, for gin, we take a, a variety of ingredients. They call them the botanical blend. So it's things like juniper berries is, is one of the things that is on, in almost all gins, um, coriander, lots of different other herbal ingredients. And they actually distill the gin one more time with those ingredients added. And so gin actually has some flavor. It actually has some of that flavor that came Definitely. through distillation. You can smell it. Right, you can smell it. So it's very herbal, almost floral smelling, um, but it's so much different than vodka, even though they might be made with the same base spirits, right? They could have the exact same ingredients until that last step, and you get a lot of flavor out of this one. Right? So would you say, how you mentioned earlier, that making drinks is a lot like how you are in the kitchen. So would you say like how with the whiskeys and the rum, how it's in the barrel, 
but you say it ages like if you made a, a soup. You let it sit in the pot and simmer longer to really get that flavor. It does. It does extract some more flavors okay. from the ingredients. Um, another interesting aside with that is, is anytime you take taste a spirit that is aged in a barrel, like the whiskey or the rum, um, you'll very often taste vanilla as a note in the flavor profile. Okay, It's very common that that will be. And it's because um, if anybody bakes at home, you might have had the option to buy real vanilla extracts or the much cheaper artificial vanilla extract. So big price difference. Big price difference, right? <laughs> vanilla beans are very expensive. And the artificial stuff is actually made from a component that's extracted from oak called vanillin. Okay, so you're actually getting a little bit of that vanilla flavor because aging in the barrel that these do is extracting some of that vanillin from the oak and giving a little bit of that flavor into these. Okay, so you'll see that flavor component being part of this and it might be surprising. Where did we get vanilla flavor? There's no vanilla. Uh, but now that kind of explains that answer there for you. Okay, okay. so which one do you like better the first two? Oh, that's horn. That's horn. I will say the first one only because I love lime in my drink. Fair enough. I, okay. Lime over I lemon. Lime over lemon. I'm a lime kind of girl. Fair enough. Okay. But Great. But this one could get you in trouble because you would just sip on it sure. and then it's gone. And you're it's like, very hey. light. I think that's one of the reasons that it's so well so liked. So light. It basically is like sparkling water. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. All right. Okay. So as you're prepping the next one, we had a question come in about when if you could substitute your clear liquors just because it's clear would you think they live in the same family or certain drinks are just for certain clear liquors you are you that's a great question and the answer is yes you can substitute them right first all sir first off because there are lots of famous classic cocktails that can use either okay um gimlets we're going to make one here now um traditionally were made in, out of gin mm -hmm. um but in the 80s and 90s making them out of vodka became him Okay, um, doing so, and we're going to make ours out of vodka, it lets the other ingredients that we're going to use shine through. So ours is going to be cucumber basil, and using the, the vodka as opposed to the gin will let us taste the ingredients in those. Uh, the same can be true of a martini, um, gin martinis and vodka martinis, right? So really it's what you like. Um, like me personally, I'm not the hugest gin fan, so I don't use it very often, and I can, if there's a cocktail that calls for it, I can use gin or vodka instead. Right. So okay. that's, a, that's a great question there as well. Um, we are going to go for our last one here, if you will, the, the curvy glasses. Curvy. Okay. And I'm going to have one of these with you. All right. Two curvy glasses coming up. Great. My job. This will be the first time we're going to do what's called muddling. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is that technique that I mentioned. Um, very simple and straightforward. But basically, you know, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Okay. So, so we won't add our ice in here yet because we're going to do our muddling in our cocktail shaker. All right. So step one, we're going to add in two slices of cucumber. These are about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, so, and, and I strongly recommend you use English cucumbers. Sometimes you'll see them called hot house cucumbers. Um, they are wrapped in plastic. They're not the sort of standard old school cucumber. So we're going to add those in. Um, and then we're going to add in our basil leaves. And I'd say about two good sized basil leaves um, would be the ticket. If you, if you grow get basil on your back porch, this is a perfect cocktail um, to, to take use of that. Okay, so we'll throw those in there as well. Um, and what we're going to do then is we're going to take our muddler, which is bl a blunt end, we'll invert it, and we are just going to go to town smashing on our ingredients here, okay? So we're just crushing them up. Um, the idea being that we want to release the juices um, and, the, and the oils and anything like that that's in these, okay? So if someone doesn't have some cucumbers in their kitchen, do you have a substitute for cucumber or they just should leave the cucumber I out? would say on this one that you, you would make a great drink still if you made this without the cucumber. Okay. So this is going to feature, um, this is going to feature lemonade, lemon juice and lime juice, both. Um, so the basil with lemon and lime is, is really a great combination as well. I hope, hope you're getting excited for this one. I am. I'm like, I put so, some work into it. You said you're making one, so I know it's going to be good. There we go. All right. So um, kind of describe what we got there. So they, Okay. It, it, so we have some muddled um, cucumbers and basil. Mm -hmm. It kind of looks like almost if you were mashing it to make some baby food. Right. It is, it is pretty well mashed. The goal is to, to get it smashed up, get as much of the juice out of it as you can. Okay. So, up in the game here, this one calls for one and a half ounces of vodka. Ooh, it's so crazy. we're gonna we're gonna load that one up, and we'll throw that in. Oh gosh. Just a little, 
And then this we're going to use our lemonade. So again, I just made this basic simple lemonade out of um, uh, fresh ba or fresh lemon, sugar, and water. About how many did you use? Like a whole lemon? I used one whole lemon, okay. and then I used about a quarter cup of sugar um, and uh, about a cup and a half of water. Okay. But you can adjust that to your to your liking as well. So we're going to use one ounce of lemonade. Okay. And then, so we have the basil. Is there another herb that's similar to basil that's a bit substitute, or is this one of those? You know, if you got basil, cool. If not, just stick to the lemon. You lot. could you could make this with a lot of different things. We have mint here as well, mm -hmm. um, and you really could use mint in this also. Um, it'd be a little bit stronger flavored, but mint and basil have some similar nose mm -hmm. characteristics to them. Um, you know, I wouldn't be scared to make this one with parsley. Um, which seems a little odd, but but over the, the early spring, I've been at home making some parsley cocktails that are just exceptional. They have super fresh flavor. Um, they'll color the cocktail itself in this beautiful neon green. Um, so that could be one that you could potentially uh, substitute in there. And I actually, have to just trust you. I don't know if I'm throwing some parsley in, in my cocktail, but I may have to try. I trust you. Last add is going to be a quarter of an ounce of lime juice. Um, and to keep from overpowering the lemon that we've got here, even though I know you're at well, we're going with it. It's for you. Just Throw it in there. You know, Top me with ice, please, miss. Okay, I can do that. Great assistant. We should take this show on the road, Kyle. What do you think about it? I'm in. You tell me when. All right. I'll get us booked. <laughs> we'll get us a manager and we're going to hit the road. All right. All right. So this one we're going to shake up really well. And since we have those muddled ingredients in there, we're going to make sure we shake it a little bit extra, basically. We want to make sure that we get all of the goodness out. So we got a question about the cucumber. Um, English cucumbers, do you have to go to like special grocery stores? Is that pretty much? I think these days that they're available almost almost everywhere. everywhere. If you have a okay. small small grocery store, maybe not, but even even Walmart would have. Uh, to be honest, I don't think I ever look at the different types of cucumbers. Yeah. I just pick up which one looks the best and keep going. Sure. So the difference is the thickness of the skin. Oh, okay. And the flavor a little bit. The, if you're eating them fresh, the, uh, English cucumbers are a little bit more pleasant to eat. Um, you don't have to peel them to eat them. They have a very soft, tender skin. Okay. Right. Okay. That's going really pretty good. Oh, look at that beautiful color. Mmm. Oh, that's oh, pretty. Yeah, that's oh, lovely. that's the good stuff in there. It's, oh, don't worry, everybody. I'll taste it for you. Don't worry. So we're gonna top that one with just a little and I got a cucumber. cucumber. For a little snack. And so, see so you can kind of, you might can see that there's frost on the outside of the glass. Um, that's because we're using plenty of ice in here, and we're using a cup full of ice. Okay, and so when we do that, it does give us a more enjoyable cocktail to consume. I'm excited. This one they should serve you at the spa. I, uh, I believe this would make quite a good spa drink. I'm going to have to get me one of these. So you do taste the cucumber. Kind of a cool flavor. You do taste the basil. It's like a adult juice. Like if you go to like Artist Garden and get you like a fresh squeezed juice. Sure. So I feel the healthiness in it to where I don't feel <laughs> yeah. as guilty or bad for drinking it. But um, I'm going to say this is definitely for you health conscious ones out there that want to keep it fit and stick to your vegetables. This is definitely the drink to go. And this is a, a really bang up um, summer cocktail. I mean, this just hits the mark as this a summer cocktail. Great. Does it look like some cheese and crackers or something? Yes, for sure. Mm. And the freshness of the basil is real nice in there. Um, this is great. Wow. It definitely feels like a mixture of a juice bar drink mixed with a cocktail. I can see why you wanted to make yourself one. This is great, guys. Mm -hmm. so all you need was a little cucumber. We used some basil. some lim You did lime? Lime and lemon. Lime and lemon. And then we also use some of the um, lemonade, right? You got it. Can I have a bit of ice in there, please? Oh, of course. Let me ice you up. You got Thank you. I got you. You deserve it. All right. All right. Okay. Great. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Great, so now I don't have to skip along. <laughs> so I hope you all are still tuning in and learning some great tips and tricks for making your at-home cocktail. Thank you for all the questions and comments that have been coming in. Please feel free to continue to send those in. Yeah, if you have um, any, even if it's not about these drinks, uh, maybe what to, what to stock your bar with, um, what what products or tools you might need, we'll, we'll be happy to help you there as well. i got to get my little cucumber slice, You got to got so basically, I can say that I had a healthy drink for the day, right? Yeah, that's that's just you. You do taste the cucumber a bit. It's my serving of veggies. Very light, mm -hmm. um, very very fresh. That almost makes you hungry. Uh, yeah, that's why I said it makes me want to have a snack. I feel like I'm supposed to have something to nibble on as I sip it. But this is perfect if you just were sitting in the backyard, want to make a quick cocktail. That one's lovely. That is quite refreshing. All right, so we're gonna go on to our last Singing beverage of the night. Happy. And we're going to make a whiskey smash. Um, this is a really, really simple whiskey drink. Um, it is in the same vein as sort of a whiskey sour. Um, there are lots of other whiskey cocktails like this. Um, but we are going to start, we're going to have to muddle again. So we're going to start with an empty shaker. Clean your shaker in between Yes, drinks. you want to, especially if you're using something strongly flavored, like we just used basil and cucumber. Um, and the whiskey smash does not want to play with them. So we're gonna. I think those will go well. mm. So, so are these like standard recipes that you feel like if I went to the bar and said, "Hit me with a whiskey smash," they're not gonna look at me crazy? It right? would depend on the type of establishment. Um, if you are at this any any fine dining establishment, would probably be able to make you all of these. Okay. Um, they, you know, they they'll have all of these ingredients. Um, and you know, that's a, that's a thing to mention. Is, is different places. Um, bartenders have different levels of expertise. So you might find some that you can and some that you can't. But uh, mm -hmm. but as a general rule, you these are not way out there cocktails by any stretch of the imagination. Gotcha. Okay, so we're, we're muddling again, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with three wedges of lemon, um, and we'll throw those in. Nice sized wedges. You want, a, you want a good bit of tang in this drink to go with the whiskey. With that, we're going to break out our mint. Um, mint, sort of the quantity depends on how much you like mint or anything like that. I, I think the recipe calls for like five or six leaves. Um, I like to use a little tiny bit more than that. So just a couple of little sprigs, get those in there and we go back to town with our muddler. Okay. I think, I feel like I've only had mint in a mojito. A mojito is a famous cocktail featuring mint. In addition is the mint julep, which is the famous, um, it's very similar to this. It's a famous whiskey drink of the Kentucky Derby. Um, if you've ever heard of that. So that's a, another example of a, a mint cocktail or a cocktail featuring mint. But mojito is a good, good yeah. example too. And you actually, to, to mention that, you can substitute, we asked about substituting ingredients. You mm -hmm. could substitute um, basil for a mint julep. You could substitute basil for a mojito. Okay. Right? And it would, it would give it a, a nice unique flavor um, that you would get out of that as well. So we're gonna muddle that up real well. And if you will, will you go ahead and ice me, please? Ice you. I want to make sure we have some ice for our drink. Yeah, if we'll just do one at a time. Perfect. Okay, so to this, we're going to add in two ounces of bourbon. Do you hear that? So, oh, y'all can we're, we're actually using Tennessee whiskey. You can sub them. I'm going to taste it here. this time. So we're going to go in with two ounces. Okay. Yeah, I definitely don't use my measuring cup. I just... And once you get a little better feel for it, like if I if I were making these at home and wasn't doing it as part of a demonstration, I would be less inclined to use the measuring I got you. Um, but I can understand. I think when I first started bartending, I was like measuring everything. And the more I got into it, right. I just knew... One, two, three, that was my shot for. Exactly. Last ingredient to here is going to be three quarters of an ounce of um, our simple syrup for a little bit of sweetness. So we really, um, all we've got here is the tang, the sweetness, and the bourbon, and then that mint playing with it, right? We're adding those distinctive flavors, those, those distinctive tastes. I'm excited for this one. I've, this of is course, one of my had, like, um, like whiskey I've had like, I've had whiskeys, but I rarely make it like a cocktail. I, I usually will. Someone taking shots or like just having meat. I literally make a cocktail. So I'm excited to try. Go ahead and throw the rest of our ice in one of those. Uh, 
And this one is, you know, a lot of whiskey actually, or a lot of whiskey drinks are more wintertime. Um, they make you so warm. Right. But this one here with the freshness of the mint um, and, the, and the fresh lemon in it really makes a nice cocktail even for, for warmer weather. So we're going to take that and we're going to garnish nicely with a sprig of mint oh, and a lemon. Be the prettiest. It's going to be hard to top the uh, the beautiful green. I was about to say the cucumber one is off, is actually quite. And a whiskey smash. Um, if your bar can't make you a whiskey smash, find a new bar. Find a new bar. If, okay. if they won't make you that, then find a new bar. Give that All one right. a taste and tell me what you think. You will need a little stir because that's what professionals do. Okay. I think this is my favorite. Is it? Great. Good. This one is good. You. We, we've outdone ourselves, finally. You, you got me. Do you, you taste the taste, mint? I taste the mint. It's not as strong as I thought it would be. Right. When I started putting the leaves in, I was like, oh, Lord, it's going to be a peppermint. No. But if you definitely, it's not that strong. You get a little bit of nose of the lemon, mm -hmm. the um, simple syrup. I can taste the jack. Great. Good. I do taste that in there. And I give the hints up. It, it's good. Mm -hmm. And this would be the strongest cocktail that we made, as, as you can tell, right? And, and of course, I like the strongest one. Good. And if you're tasting cocktails, um, just like if you were tasting wines, just like if you were tasting plain spirits, um, you do want to typically work from lightest to, to most flavorful, okay? Mm -hmm. So that you still have something left in the palate to be able to taste once you get to the stronger ones. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is consider, we, we use big national brands here as our, as our spirits for the day, but consider that um, craft distilling and local distilling is becoming quite a thing. Um, right. Here in Atlanta, we've got a couple of different craft distillers, so you could consider purchasing from them, but maybe you're watching from, from somewhere other than Atlanta. Um, and certainly feel free to support those local distillers. Um, you've seen probably what craft beer has done here in the U.S. And mm -hmm. um, you used to not even know what craft beer was 25 years ago. And now there are breweries in, in every city for sure. And even in some medium sized towns. Um, and distilling is kind of going the same way where we're, we're seeing a lot more of them pop up. So certainly feel free to support your, your local craft distillers because they are out there making high quality products. Um, so, so do consider working with them as well. Well, thank you so much. I personally have learned so much today. I can't wait to take all these tips and tricks that I've learned back home and then, you know, safely maybe invite a couple people over, show them my new skills and set everything up on the bar. Make sure I, what's my French word? I learned mise en place. Make sure I'm a mise en place. Get your things in place. Get you want to do that before you place. start. Yeah. That is very important. I sure, I sure appreciate the Alumni Association hosting me and um, doing something like this for all of you. Um, we really hope you enjoyed the time with us. And um, you yes. know, ultimately, if you have any any questions, we're we're pretty easy to get in touch with. You can find me through the School of Hospitality website or the College of Business website. Um, and certainly, I'd be open to answering questions that any of you may have at a later date as well. Definitely. And if you're actually interested in learning more and being coming into the hospitality industry. Definitely visit the hospitality website at hospitality.gsu.edu where you can learn more about their programs that they offer for undergrad and graduate. You can maybe take Dr. Kyle's class in beverage management and he can give you even more details on how to make that perfect cocktail at home. Again, thank you for joining the Alumni Association. We hope that this isn't your last event and that you stay tuned and you follow us for more events that we have upcoming for the remaining of the year. You can visit us at alumni.gsu.edu where you can stay up to date with all of our calendar events that we have coming up. We do lots of events that include drink demos, professional development, networking events. Um, we would just love to have you be a part of it and continue to follow our alumni brand and what we've been doing. This has been a great event. Hopefully you had fun at home watching. I've had fun sitting here learning new things, sipping on my new favorite cocktails. I can't wait to try them. I may or may not finish them now. Um, <laughs> and this has been great. And I'm looking forward to doing another one. And hopefully you all join us for our next event. Great. And have a great Thursday and tomorrow's Friday. So you made it to the weekend. Yeah. Bye, definitely. everyone. Thank you. Thank have you. a good one.